and happy Epiphany. This is one of the most beautiful holidays in the church season. And in some places, it's even celebrated above um, the holiday of Christmas because Christmas was the holiday when, when Christ became flesh and God dwelt among us. And that is an amazing thing. But in Epiphany, God is revealed to be here for all of us. And for a lot of people, especially those who have been traditionally marginalized, Epiphany is a huge celebration because it is the day when God really, truly committed to being our God, everyone's God. And, and for so many people who are on the, the fringes of things, Epiphany is, is absolutely amazing because it gives us that glimpse into the heart of God that says, I care about you. I truly care about you. And Christ is not here as king of just the Jews, but as king of the world. And so today we celebrate the holiday of Epiphany. Um, oftentimes we too quickly dismiss it as just a holiday to celebrate wise men coming. In reality, it is a holiday that says, um, Christ is here for the world. So from Matthew chapter two, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and we have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. Now, this is a weird phrase, but um, in, in this time, it was common to say that um, the, the whole people in, in whatever region, whatever area, were um, sort of in line with the king. Like everything was, was together. And if the king thought it, if the king ruled it, if the king felt it, the whole kingdom agreed. Now, remember, this is still, I mean, our, our best understanding of the way things worked, it's not really quite like that, but, but it's a bit like what we imagine a fiefdom to be, where, where the king protects the people, the king oversees things, and what the people get out of it is safety, protection, and um, a strong government. So when Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. Meaning um, in Jerusalem, he was very well thought of, and, and so everyone was, was with him in mind, even if they weren't. He gathered all the chief priests and all the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, you Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report it to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. When they, then they opened their treasure chests and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful, beautiful scene. Um, 
I, I know people have preached it time and time and time over. And they've said, well, gold means this and myrrh means this and frankincense means this. And yes, those things were used for some of that. But um, in the end, most scholars actually feel like the reason that these three things were presented was because they were expensive things. And so this is showing a sign of we are bringing our very best things to you. Hard to get things, expensive things, fancy things. We're bringing those things to you as a gift, which means we really honor the fact that you are a king. Because if it were any old regular person, we might bring a gift, but it's not going to be our best gifts. So, um, so these gifts that are being brought are the best that people have. And it is the best that people who aren't Jewish have. And they're offering those to Jesus. This is super important. I can't tell you how important this is in our theology. That at this point in time, people who are not even Jewish are offering to Christ their most expensive and exquisite and rare gifts. It says, we honor your royalty. It's one thing for people in the country to honor their king. That's what this passage that I drew to your attention earlier about, about Herod, the king, being troubled and everyone else is troubled with him. It is one thing when you are moved by your king and honor your king. It is totally different when someone who is not even a part of who you are comes and honors your king as a king. I think it's easy for us to forget. It's sort of like buying Christmas presents. We just got done with that. We just got done with getting Christmas gifts. Imagine opening the gifts under the tree. And as you're opening gifts, you're finding all these great treasures that people you love have given you that are personal and wonderful. And then you get to the last present under the tree. And it is the most amazing present yet. It is something super valuable, incredibly rare, worth more than, than anything else you own. And you open that gift. And it's from someone you don't know from very, very far away who wants to just honor you because they think you're a valuable person. Can you imagine? Uh, we would all fall out of our chairs, wouldn't we? If our best gifts ev at Christmas time, our best thing that we ever receive comes from a total stranger. You know, no one else in this story None of the locals, none of the people who are from Judea, none of the people who are from Jerusalem are, or from Bethlehem for that matter, no one in Mary and Joseph's family is standing at the manger scene offering them gifts, which would be traditional when someone has a baby. It's it's traditional to offer gifts because during that first few months, the parents are expected to parent and, and to not be working, not be doing um, other things to, to earn money or to make food. Mary wouldn't necessarily be cooking lots and lots of things, but probably a little bit. Um, others would be helping take care of them. But in the story, nobody helps take care of them, except these strangers from the East, these Magi, who, who are visitors from afar, who offer them enough um, gold, frankincense, myrrh, enough rare and wonderful things 
that they're able to go and escape to Egypt and live off of those gifts until the time when they have to return back home. Without those gifts, they might not have made it. Just wrap your mind around it. Who of us went to a stranger's house this Christmas and gave them our most valuable possessions? It's unheard of. This story is unheard of. But somehow, this is our story. The story that people recognize so powerfully the importance of this king. That not only is the whole nation troubled when he is troubled, but this king this king affects even the, the people of other nations who never even know him. Herod is a king, but Jesus, Jesus is a king wider than we can reach. And that, my friends, is epiphany. Our God isn't just a king. Our God isn't just a part of our lives. We don't just come on Sunday morning to see our God. We offer our most valuable possessions because we know the power and the wonder and the majesty of our king. But sadly, Sometimes we're not the ones waiting to give them the gifts. Sometimes it's people who are far away who notice. Sometimes it's easier to even notice when you're far away. So my hope for you is that you are so blessed, this epiphany, that you have an epiphany that your eyes are opened to the majesty of our King, to the glory of God on high, who is so amazing that total strangers give him their very best. May we, who are not total strangers, also offer Christ our very best this year. May we open our eyes and have an epiphany about who Christ is so that we can no longer just stay where we are. Just be in this place looking from afar, but we will be compelled to become closer to God this year. Compelled to travel whatever distance it takes to give God our very best. Compelled to love our Lord in a fabulous and wonderful new way this year. This epiphany, may we be those magi from the East who say, God, I will go for you. I will travel, I will give, I will show others and tell others who you are and i will trust the light that you shine in my life and i will follow it may that be our story and our epiphany this place that god put us in is is fabulous but I pray that God pushes you to reach to a new place. Not necessarily a new geographic location. I mean, right now, let's face it, I'm in Europe. But in a new place in your life.
thank you all for everything you already do for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for all you do for the church that represents Christ in the world, for all you do for um, this, this time of spiritual renewal that I'm in right now. I'm speaking before I leave, but but I know that right now I am being renewed as I travel someplace afar to come closer to Christ, to come closer to my family that I treasure, and to offer to God a new perspective. May we all, may we all find that way to travel anew to our Lord. And may this year be a year filled with epiphany for us, with a love and passion for God that will take us anywhere God calls us. Because it is our joy to follow and serve that light. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may we be blessed to serve and give. Amen.